Yo, what's up, man? What's going on? Sunday, September the 29th. It's, uh, look at that basketball in the back. That's little Sean's basketball. He beat me. We played one-on-one -on -one the other day. That nigga beat me, man. First time he beat me in his life. It might be over for me, man. I might not beat him never again, but I doubt it, though. Um, September 29th, 2024. It's a dreary, rainy day here in New Jersey. I'm gonna run this light. I'm gonna eat this light. That light was yellow, it just turned red, but I'm gonna eat it. Whoop, 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 whoop. No police. Um, so yeah, it's a rainy, dreary day here, man. I'm chilling. And this video, this is a shout out to my man out on the West Coast. Shout out to my nigga Kais JP. Y'all don't know. Look at that Halloween stuff. They they already got Halloween stuff up over here already. So what I want to talk about tonight, because it is 5:31 p.m. Sunday. September 29th, 2024. I look good, don't I? Don't I look Look at my beard, though. Look at how my beard look. My beard money. Because I look good. That's why. When I'm money, my beard money. I'm real particular about my beard, man. If I go to the barbershop and I need my beard. See, my beard is important because the beard is what the honeys like. They like niggas with full beard. See, my beard full. My bed full. I got the Barry White, that Gerald Levert. My joint way up here. I ain't got the chin strap. I ain't got no chin strap. You know them niggas that can't grow a beard. They had that little line that come down there. That ain't no beard, nigga. That's a fake beard. See, I got the real joint. My joint come here and connect all the way up here. That's why she love me. She like to put her face on my face so she can feel my beard. I go to the barber shop and the barber mess up my beard, man, I be hot. I hate that. That fuck up my whole day. Man, how you mess my I told you, you tell them before you be I tell them before they cut it. Say, yo, keep my joint up high. Connect it up high. Sure enough, he do what he wanna do and connect and bring my shit down there. I'd be like, yo, order not to pay your ass. Started fighting this barber shop, but look, don't look for the perfect honey. Look for the honey that's perfect for you, ladies. Don't look for the perfect nigga. Look for the nigga that's perfect for you. And this is what I mean by that. This is what I mean by that. I was misinformed again. I was miseducated again. And I was always taught to find, show and find the perfect honey. She got college degree master's degree, PhD, she got college degree, she got a good job, you get a good job, she got a good job, y'all make a lot of money together, find the perfect honey, she ain't got no kids, she got a college degree, she got a good job, she make a lot of money she got her own stuff, got her own apartment, got her own house. How many of y'all can identify with that? Being told that. Being, having that bullet shot in your brain. How many of y'all had that bullet shot in your head like me? You got a bullet in your head. I'm gonna go ahead and give me some coffee. I went and bought me some marshmallows. I'm gonna throw some marshmallows in my joint. I'm gonna throw some marshmallows in my joint. How many of y'all been shot in the head with that bullet? Like me. I got some marshmallows. They ain't good for you, but I don't care. I'm gonna put them in my coffee anyway. 
mind your business. If you don't want to put none in your coffee, you don't eat them, good for you. That's your life. I don't care if you eat them or not. Don't worry about what I do. I got mine. You just get yours. How many of y'all had that bullet shot in your head? And I think the people meant well. But to me, in my opinion, my opinion, that was some horrible, horrible information. And let me tell you why. Thank you. Let me let me let me tell you why I feel that way in particular. Um, the reason I feel that way, let's get a medium. Let's get a medium. So, so the reason I feel that way is this. Look at my marshmallow. Bro, my marshmallow's in the store. Where the chocolate at? Chocolate. Chocolate. Chocolate in my joint. Look at that. Look at, watch my cream. Look at that cream. I got the light cream. You probably got heavy cream. My cream better than yours. Cause mine is light. Yours is heavy. Yours fall to the bottom. Mine be on the top. Look at how look 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 at how I pour my cream in there. Watch this. Look at that. I pour my cream better than you. I pour my cream and my coffee better than you. You don't pour your cream in there that good. You ain't that good like that like I am. I like your afro. You want to say what's up to my people on YouTube? You want to show them your afro? Come here. I'm on YouTube right now. Come here. Yo, check this afro out right here. A, B, C. Easiest one, two, three. Check it out, y'all. Simple as. Come here. Don't stand up here. A, B, C. One, two, three, baby. You and me, girl. A, B, C, B. Yo, look at this afro. Check it out, y'all. Come on, come on. Let's marry you. Let's do it. Let's do it. A, B, C, baby, with that counting up to three. See your grandpa, baby, D. Tito, J, A, B, C, you and me. Do, 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 Listen, listen, y'all. How you doing? Doing all right. What's your name? My name's Casey. Casey? Yeah. What's up, Casey? Hi, what's your up? Hair, your hair is dope. Thank you so much. You got Instagram? I do, yes. Give me your Instagram. Insta? The Instagram is, well, it's Casey underscore the underscore gold. Look, look at it, look at it, it. y'all. We gonna get yeah, into a fight, man. <laughs> Yo, look at that, look at that hair, y'all. I had hair like that in the eighth grade. Like, this is my Instagram. Uh-huh, Instagram, Instagram is, this is her Instagram, y'all. <laughs> K-E-Y-S-I period underscore Period. Somebody just. That's how we started alive. D A period underscore period goat. So there it is right here. Okay. So that's Casey right there. Now Casey, that says Dominican restaurant. You Dominican? I am Dominican. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Born and raised. Where you was born at? I was born in the um, capital, Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo. Yes. All right, Kuala Supat. Uh. <laughs> uh, I was gonna ask you what you come, but you just told. Um, so when when did you come to America? Five years old. Five. Yeah. Uh, I know Spanish and everything. So you speak there. Spanish though? Yep. Of course, of course. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> All right. So 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 Casey. Yes. Um, how did you get your hair like that? Why do you why do you wear that particular hairstyle? My hair is like this because I don't know how to do my hair basically. So um, since I don't know how to do it, I just let it be on its own. No, I just fluff it up a little bit, spray it with water, nothing. All right, y'all go follow Casey on her Instagram and tell her, say, yo, I saw you on Sean G, the <laughs> podcast. So follow me on my Instagram. All right. Because I'm going um, to um, post you on it. <laughs> what would it be? The podcast was so. It's called, it's like, yeah, Y'all check her hair out, y'all. You know what song I was singing? Yeah, I do, yeah. What songs are you saying? That's the Jackson 5. What you know about the Jackson 5? <laughs> I love the Jackson 5. You do? Yeah. That's me right here. 
Perfect. I got you. So I'm gonna follow you back. Thank you. I really, really dig your hair. So how Thank old you are so you? Much. I'm 18. Actually, next week's my birthday. So 19. Today's your birthday? Next week. Yo, everybody go on Casey's <laughs> Instagram and wish her a happy birthday. You'll be 19 next, next yeah, week. Yeah, I'm gonna be 19. How does it feel to be 19? It's no different. Still bills, that's it. Just bills. Okay, okay, okay. All right, well, Casey, thank you, man. Thank you. All right. All, <laughs> nice all right, all right. So, look. Look, man. How you gonna, how you gonna, how you gonna tell me, man, I ain't got the dopest channel in the universe? I got the dopest channel in the universe. I got the dopest channel ever. Which one should I get? Which one should I get? Let's get the uh, let's get the Colombian joint. Let's get the Colombian. Ah, oh, that shit ain't that shit ain't even hot. Casey, which one of these is, is fresh? Any of these fresh? Cause, yeah, cause ain't nothing in this one right here. This is the bag right there. Cause I got my two I got my two marshmallows in there. I can't mess my coffee up. I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna cut Casey out the video. My coffee be messed up. Casey gonna get cut out the video. I have a dark bro. Do you want a dark bro? That's fresh? This one is fresh. All right, give it to me. The Colombian or the original bro, those aren't fresh? No, no, that one's the fresh one. Okay. We're gonna go with the dark roast. Oh, yeah, right original, that, that was good? Yeah. Uh, she got the pink head back there. She didn't want to come on the fair. She got pink head. Check out with the pink Come here, come here. Let me show them. Show them here. She's working. Casey, come here for a minute. Let me ask you a question. Y'all know where I'm going with it. Y'all know I gotta go there. Come in. Let me ask you a question. Now, hold up. Make sure my coffee good, cause I'm gonna I'm cut Casey out. It ain't no good. <laughs> ah, it's good. Now, Casey, you Dominican, right? Yeah. Now, your Dominicans come in a lot of different colors, a lot of that different shades, yeah, right? Of course. Now. Even growing up on, so you grew up on the island of Dominican Republic two or five. Have you been back since? I have not, cause I I had trouble with my passport and then my green card. But now I'm actually all set to be going. Okay. Now Dominicans come in all different colors and shades. Some are light, yeah, bright, damn near white. Yeah, that is true. Some are black as a telephone. Uh huh. And some are brown like you. Now, what do you consider yourself in terms of color? What do you What do you color you mean as if i identify as black yeah like uh, i mean yeah i don't know as black i mean it comes it's in our long history you know dominicans basically um you know they're haitian and then the haitians come from africa so basically we're all mixed up in africa so yeah we're basically black okay okay um so you you would consider yourself a, a black woman yes sir. okay okay you speak spanish though i do um do you know of any dominicans that like don't want nothing to do with their black history um, not really, because, you know, my whole family, like, we, my mom's, like, light-skinned, my dad's, like, dark-skinned. So your, dad, your, your, your dad's darker than you? Yeah, my dad's, like, really dark. He's black. <laughs> yeah, and he's that, black. that nigga, like, purple. <laughs> you like, yeah. like, like that right there? <laughs> you speak Spanish, though? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, um, we're actually the first generation to be coming to this country. So, um, you know, uh, we left all our family back in the DR. Um, so basically, um, we're very lonely here in the States. So, you know, um, whenever they do go back, I mean, I haven't come back, but mm -hmm. when they do go back, um, it should be a big, like, meetup between all of us. Cause like, yeah, I haven't seen those people in like so long, like years. I don't even remember their faces type stuff. It's bad. Now, Casey, do you, um, you ever get discriminated against because of your color? Oh yeah, of course yeah. You do? Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
I've been called the N word, you know. You're before. called nigger. Yeah, of course. Really? Yeah, but like you know, hard R. Somebody would would yell the out the hard like, R, like nigger. Yeah. Right. <laughs> somebody yeah. one time yelled out like white power at me or something. I don't know, but like that stuff doesn't really bother me because they don't know me. I don't know them, so you know, why let it affect me? Okay. Okay. Do you get sometimes? Do people think you're foundational Black American? They think you're a Black American? Yeah, actually, people don't always tell me like oh i'm so surprised you speak spanish i didn't know people never realize that i'm not actually from america but i don't really mind i really care okay yeah. um what nationality you think i am yeah. Yeah. Uh, come, come. are you from here the i'm asking you I i'm asking you you are from the states i'm from the states yes but, oh. but so so you think i'm um you think i'm dominican Actually, I don't. You kind of look Puerto Rican, though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I look Puerto Rican. Yeah, I look Puerto Rican, yeah. Okay. Uh, what about foundational Black Americans? You know, who foundational Black Americans are. Okay, so the foundational Black Americans are the Black Americans that were enslaved here and okay. were are indigenous to this country. They didn't migrate from Africa. They didn't come from. Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Haiti, they were already here. They were already here? From the South, mostly from mm. the South. Georgia, Mississippi. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't look like that? Actually, you don't. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Okay, God, no, tell the truth. I, I, <laughs> tell actually, the, don't. You do look, I did think like you were Puerto Rican at first. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> okay, all right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um. Well, Y'all make sure y'all follow Casey on her Instagram. Um, how you cut your hand around it? Oh, I was helping my friend open his trunk. So like his trunk got stuck, so he pulled on the seats. I come in the trunk, I pull the lever, I come out and my whole thing just cut off. Okay. I didn't okay. even notice though. All right, so we're gonna let Casey go. I'm Puerto Rican for today on this video. <laughs> I'm gonna be a Puerto Rican. Casey say I'm Puerto Rican. But Casey, I appreciate you, man. Thank of you for uh, thank you for being a part of part of my video. Of course. I appreciate you. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Well, all right, all right. You got my YouTube channel? Not the YouTube The part, the part. I'm gonna send you the, I'm gonna send you the video. Okay, you do. I'll send it to you. Thank you. All right. Y'all done made me get off track with my topic. All right, so look. So that's the thing, right? You put a little honey in there. Cause that dark rose kind of strong. So, I know right where I left off. I know right right where I left off. So, um, which one did she give me? Was it this one? No, it must have been this one. I think it was this one. You raised up. So. I was shot in the head with that bullet, right? Find the perfect girl, find the perfect woman with all of the qualities and attributes that I just outlined for you. Uh, what's up, man, how you doing? I need to pay by cash because I ain't got my car with me. Um, yeah, I ain't, got no, I ain't got no number. All right. So, um, all of those attributes that I highlighted and expounded upon earlier. Thank you, man. My man, appreciate you, kid. Appreciate you. You too, man. You know, job, money, education, all that stuff. Find the perfect girl. Find the perfect wife so y'all can be happy and be married, right? Now, this is why I think that's a flawed uh, strategy, right? This is why I think that that's a flawed, that's, that's bad suggestion, that's horrible advice, and let me tell you why. You know, my philosophy used to be this, right? Check me out. Check me out. My philosophy used to be this, right? 
I used to, I grew up telling myself and my, one of my laws was I wasn't going to deal with no honey who had kids. I wasn't going to deal with no woman that had no kids. Right? Because I felt like the woman would want me to take care of her kids that weren't mine. And I wasn't going to spend my money on no kids that weren't mine. That was my philosophy. And uh, I lived a long time like that. I mean, I used to get with honeys, you know what I'm saying, knock it down, get the kitty cat. If she had kids or whatever, I'd get the kitty cat. But I kept going I wasn't trying to start nothing serious with no honey that had kids and um, you know because I was on this quest to look for the perfect honey the perfect woman and as I've lived I'm 55 years old I'm born in 1969 I know I look good for my age because a lot of young honeys be coming on my Instagram Be telling me, say, Sean G, you look good You know what I tell them? Yeah, I know I do <clears throat> They say, Sean G, I want to get with you I want to give you some You know what I tell them? I know you do I know you do So as I've lived my life um, I never found the perfect honey Right, And I was in a relationship with a woman For about nine years I was, in a, I was in a relationship with one woman For around nine years And she had two daughters She had two daughters <clears throat> And um, I wasn't all right with one of the daughters, but I was uh, very, very close to the younger daughter. And actually, when I started dealing with this girl, the youngest daughter was five years old. And, um, you know, I went to prison nine years later in 2014. So she was 14 when I left to go to prison and I raised this little girl I spent a lot a lot of time with this uh, little girl because I was involved with her mother and I spent my money on this girl bought her computers sneakers whatever she needed taught her to play soccer taught, just as if she was my own right and what that taught me was that, uh, and this little girl brought a lot of joy to my life, right? It wasn't my daughter, it wasn't my biological daughter, but I treated it like that. And um, <clears throat> what I learned was that my philosophy and my uh, maxims and my laws in my mind were, you know, they had holes in them, right? They were flawed, right? They were wrong. They had, they were error. They were, they, they had errors. And, um, You know, and <clears throat> you know, me and me and me, and, you know, me and the woman, we had an okay relationship. It wasn't bad. Um, and then I've dealt with other women after that that have had kids, right? And this is my point. This is this is where I'm going with this. This is where I'm going with this. Make sure you follow me on my Instagram, the podcast with Soul. Everybody do me a favor right now and send me one dollar 
to my Cash App. That link is underneath this video. If you do not have Cash App and you have PayPal, then send me $1 to my PayPal. If you have both Cash App and PayPal, only send me $1 to either or. Do not send more than $1. Thank you in advance if you send it. And I want to thank everybody that sent uh, Cash Apps and PayPals last week when I asked you guys to. Thank you in advance. The, the dollar is for me to help pay my expenses. I'm an independent content creator. Uh, I pay for everything myself. It's for my time and for my content. You enjoy my content. I make the best content. I make the, my content is very unique. Let me not say I make the best content. My content is very unique. It's authentic and it's real. And you get to come on here and see me and how good I look and how well I speak and listen to my vocabulary. And you get to see my charisma, my charm, my people skills, my, uh, you get to see me work out, you see my physique, you get to learn a lot from me, you get my information, my wisdom, and you could give me a dollar for that. <clears throat> what I learned is this, and thank you in advance if you do. If you don't give me a dollar, that's fine too. You still keep coming back and keep watching. Thank you. Please subscribe. Is... What I have to find and what I had to find and what I have found is that I don't need the perfect honey. I need and want the perfect honey for me. Right? Listen to what I'm saying. Don't look for the perfect woman. Look for the perfect woman for you. Ladies, don't look for the perfect man. Don't look for the perfect nigga. Look for the perfect man for you. Look for the perfect nigga for you. And this is what I mean. The perfect woman for me is going to accept me in all of my idiosyncrasies, all of my eccentricis, eccentricity, eccentric, eccentricities, right? All of my idiosyncrasy, all of my idiosyncrasies, all of my eccentricities, all of my quirks, all of my shortcomings, my character defects, right? They're not going to bother her to the point where she doesn't want to be around. She's going to accept me just like I am, right? She's going to cook. She's going to be a woman. She's going to be feminine. She's going to be feminine. She's going to be a feminine woman. And she is going to know and allow me to be a man because I'm going to be that right and she's going to understand her role and her position in our situation going on I'm the nigga you the woman right and with her accepting and knowing her place it's going to make me a stronger man right it's going to it's going to uh, imbue me Right? And fill me up with life. Right? It's going to speak life into me. She's going to wash clothes. She's going to cook. She's going to keep a clean house. Right? She is going to uh, you know, make love to me when I want it. Right? Satisfy me sexually when I want it. Right? Listen to me now. She's going to be a woman. Right? Because I'm a man. 
and listen at everything that I described. It had nothing to do with how much money she make, what kind of degree she got, if she even got a college degree. Even if she's got a high school diploma, she may not have no high school diploma. She may have dropped out of high school. At this point in my life, I'm not able to afford two households, right? So she's going to have to have a job at this point. But if we were to take it to another level and get together and move in, then at that point, I have to assume the role of the provider, right? The, the 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 protector the security blanket right meaning that i have to if i'm expecting her to do all the things that i highlighted right then i need to do all of the things that allows her to be in that position that puts her in that position to do that comfortably right and maybe we don't get rich. Maybe we don't become billionaires. Maybe we don't become five million dollar heirs or millionaires or whatever. But if me being the protector, the provider, the supporter, the man of the relationship fills her with life and makes her whole and complete and then her doing the things that she does as a woman, as I... Uh, illustrated earlier makes me speaks life into me and gives me life then I'm happy right and she's happy right because now we perfect for each other right now the end goal is to get money ain't no question about that the end goal is to get rich and I will but that hasn't that doesn't have to be a prerequisite as i once thought it had to be right because look suppose i get with a honey right the perfect honey like what i described earlier college degree master's degree phd ceo She's the CEO of a big company or she's the president of a big company or the general counsel or she's a big time lawyer. You know, or she's a vice president in a corporate atmosphere. Right. And she makes a lot of money. And we don't have no financial problems. Right. Check me out. And she's pretty. Right. My honey got to be easy on the eyes, too. I got to have a fly honey. You know what I'm saying? That's important. Because how you look is important. Because, ladies, y'all want us to look right, too. She makes a lot of money. She's got all these things. She's pretty. She's all of that. We don't have no financial problems, right? But check this out. To some, that would be the perfect wife or the perfect honey. But look. With these jobs... In these uh, career ambitions that she is engaged in, she's working 11-hour days, 9-hour days, 12-hour days. She's traveling on business, right? Because her job and she makes so much money and she has so much responsibility. She's coming home stressed every night when she comes home, when she's not traveling on a plot on a, when she's not in an airport, in a hotel or on a plane or in an Uber or a taxi or in a meeting or at a conference. And I'm having to cook for myself. We ain't got no financial problems. We got the dope crib. We got a dope crib. Cars. 
No financial problems. The house may be paid off. But I'm cooking for myself. You know. I ain't getting no pussy. Right? Because she's traveling, going all over the place. And when she comes home, she's stressed out from the job. She's bringing... She's not only working at the office, she's bringing the office home to the crib because she's got so much responsibility. She's constantly on call. Now, when I contrast her to the previous woman that I described, who's going to cook for me? Who's going to cook? Say, baby, what you want? What you want to eat? Cook it and make me a plate and put it in front of me. Hmm? All my clothes, all I got to do is take my dirty clothes off and throw them in the hamper and she wash them and fold them up for me and put them in the drawer. And when she get in the bed with me every night I get to pull her to me. I get to spoon with her every night. I get to pull her to me every night. In the bed. And if I want some of that kitty cat, I get it. If I want some head, I get it. If she wants some head, I give it to her. If she wants some, you know what I'm saying? Some joint ski joint, I give it to her. But we together every night. The house is clean. Which one is better? For me. You have to figure out which one would be better for you. So, don't, ladies and fellas, don't look for the perfect, ladies, don't look for the perfect dude, the perfect nigga. Excuse me. Look for the perfect dude for you. She's going to accept, you know what I'm saying, what I do, that I'm a content creator, that I'm, you know, I tend to be a loud person, right? You know, she may snore, he may snore. Uh, you know, we all have our own little quirks and crazy things about us, man. And your partner, the person that's for you, is going to accept those things, man. It's not going to bother them. They're going to accept you. And 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 you're going to accept them for the little crazy stuff they got. But maybe that perfect honey is just going to be things that she's going to do that just ain't going to be right for you. It's going to turn you off. And you're going to maybe do some things that's going to turn her off. The person, the perfect person for you. Ladies, the perfect man for you and, and, and fellas, the perfect lady for you is going to turn you on everything they do. Just about everything they do. It's going to be some shit you ain't going to like, but for the most part, everything they do, you ain't going to have no problem with it. You're going to, uh, because of your love and your connection and your bond and your soulful bond and your mental bond with them is so strong that stuff is small potatoes to you, the things that you don't like about that person. There's way more shit that you like about them than you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. Find the perfect person for you. There's no such thing as the perfect person. There's no such thing as the perfect relationship. And if she has kids and, and, and ladies... If you get with a man and he's got kids, you know, that's a part of the deal, right? And you'll be amazed that you may grow such a connection with these kids, man, that you actually start loving these kids, man, and they're not even yours. Yeah. So this is life. This is real life. This is real life. So I'm on here. I look good. I'm very smart, I'm strong, I'm powerful. I got a lot of confidence, I believe in myself. 
I speak things into existence. I'm all that. I'm all that. And you only live one time. You only live one time. And you know what? For a long time, man, let me tell you about me, man. You all, all want to hear my real life? I used to be a player, man. I used to deal with a lot of women. I was raised up. My mother didn't raise me this way, and neither did, you know what I'm saying, my father. But I was raised just like listening to niggas in the barbershop, niggas on the corner, niggas in jail, or just niggas, period. You know, that you're supposed to have, you know, you're supposed to be a player, be a pimp, have a bunch of women. I did all of that. None of that meant anything. All I got, you know what I got out of that? You know what? You know what I got out of dealing? There was one point in my life, man, I was dealing with about six or seven women at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I had about three. I had three of them that I really, really liked. And all three of them loved me. And then I had like another three or four that I was tricking with. Like I was paying one of them car insurance. This one, I would just pay her flat out. You know what I'm saying? To come give me some head. You know what I'm saying? Come take care of me. And then the other ones was just into me. I used to just be able to hit it on the strength. You know, and I was dealing with that many women at one time. And you know what I got out of that? You know what I got out of that? Just a lot of pussy. That's it. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when I put that in context and contrast that and, and, and uh, juxtapose and place that parallel to what really makes me happy, it don't compare. Having a bunch of women and, and, and you know, because at the end of the day, you know, I was still all alone, right? The only time I wasn't alone was when I was getting down with one of them. But even that was alone because there was no connection there, right? And at one point in my life when I was a younger man and when I was a richer man, that was okay with me. I was cool with that. But when I was cool with that, I had a very shallow understanding of myself, number one, and life. So, like, and that really didn't make me feel like a man. It was like a false sense of masculinity, right? What really makes you feel like a man, what really makes me feel like a man is when, you know, you got a honey that, digs you and you dig her and y'all getting down for your crown together you know what I'm saying so you know I don't know if that makes any sense to any of y'all I don't care if it do it this is my life oh man this is my life I'm just telling you my life I share my real life on here you know why I do? Because I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't scared of y'all because I don't like y'all. I don't like none of y'all. You know who I'm talking to? All 8 billion of y'all. I don't like none of y'all. Because all y'all do is lie. Tell lies. You're scared to be who you want to be. You're scared to say what you want to say. You say yeah when you want to say no. You're not true. You're not real. You hide behind a fake profile name. You call yourself a man. You say you real and authentic and you got a fake profile name. You really and you really didn't fool yourself into denial. Was this a good video or not? Yes or no? Was this a good video or not? Yes or no? Send me a dollar on my cash app and on my PayPal. Just one dollar. Either one. Don't send two dollars. Don't send a dollar to my PayPal and a dollar to my cash app. Only send one. Thank you in advance. And uh, reality is my religion. And since reality became my religion, I've had a better life. When I was fake and trying to be somebody that I wasn't, 
that's exactly, you know, in my life, I crashed and burned because I was fake. Because when you fake, you will crash and burn and bring yourself back to reality. The universe ain't gonna have it no other way. The universe ain't gonna have it no other way. You will deal with reality. I just came from the larger bag, got my clothes out. Oh, man. Appreciate y'all. It don't never stop. It don't never stop. Go on my website and get my book. Everybody go buy my book on my website. Support me that way, too. Go buy a book. Say $25. Go get you one. My hoodies is over there. All my stuff is over there. Shorts. But go buy a book. The podcast was sold.bigcartel.com. That link is also underneath here. And I appreciate y'all. And I hope you got something from this video. I hope I've helped the young dudes in their 20s. I hope I helped y'all the most. Because y'all are the most crazy. Y'all are the most uh, lost and confused. You know how I know? Because I was 20 years old at one time. And I was lost and confused. Misinformed, miseducated, giving bad information, living my life on some nonsense. All right, y'all. Peace.